Well, hello everybody. Welcome to tonight's stream. We're going to be getting back into the book of Revelation. We have Vincent Skinner with us tonight. My name is Pastor Zach Weber. I'm the pastor of the River Church. Glad you all are joining us. Hey, if you could do me a quick favor as you're joining the stream, put in the chat where you're watching from. We want to say hello to everybody <laughs> on the stream. Also, if you could do us a big favor and uh, like the stream, share, uh, do all that. When you interact with the stream, it actually pushes the broadcast to more and more people. And tonight is going to be really exciting. Last week we started uh, going into the book of Revelation. We talked about the seven churches. And uh, tonight we're going to continue on with that. So it's going to be a powerful night. And I just feel in my heart God's really going to do something tonight. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we always say when we do these streams, there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. So even as you're you're tuning in tonight, uh, expect the Lord to touch you. Expect the Lord to minister to you, speak to you in some way. Hey, everybody over on the chat, we, we're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We're even live over on X. Last week, X blew up. So let's see what's going to happen there today. But uh, hey, everybody, it's awesome to see you. We're going to bring Vincent on in a minute. I'm just on here greeting everybody. Um, praise God. Hey, in the description of this video, you can find some links if you're interested in uh, learning more about Evangelist Vincent's ministry, also the River Church. There should be links in the uh, in the description. Hey, Edwin, good to see you, bro. Hey, Jamie, Robert, hey, Lakeview, Michigan, Worcester, Ohio, praise God. Hey, over in the great city of Coshocton, Ohio, where the rivers meet. God bless you. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Well, it's going to be an awesome time. I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do tonight. I really am. I hope you all are expecting to receive from the Holy Ghost. And uh, I'm going to pray. We'll bring Vincent on. We'll get right into the Word here today. So, Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for your Word. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. And Father, we just thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you even tonight. We ask you that you'd give us utterance in the Holy Ghost, that we would speak forth your word. Father, you know exactly what each person needs. You know what people need to hear, what they need to receive. And I pray that you would speak to people and that you would give them exactly what they need to receive. Thank you, Father, for ears that are open to hear. Thank you for hearts that are receptive to receive. And Father, I thank you that as your word goes forth, let it be like a seed planted in every heart. Let it produce fruit, 30, 60, even 100 fold, we pray. And we promise to give all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor to the wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Well, praise God. I want to say hello to my good friend, Vincent. I've been hey, really everybody. looking forward to these every Friday, man. Yeah, I'm excited it's a lot for of fun. tonight. Yeah. So, uh, how 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 are things? Do you have a good week? Yes, very good. A any very adventures? Good. Anything exciting? Oh, just uh, just getting ready to uh, go to the, the the state of Alabama. Got my visa ready. Nice. Uh, I'm going to be there next week. <laughs> uh, is it uh, one church, multiple churches? Or? Um, it's a, it's a church over uh, next weekend. Not this one coming, but the following one after that. There's a church, and then another church after that and then I, I get back home on the monday and i on, the, on that tuesday i leave three weeks to europe to germany wow three weeks where we, yeah where we've got quite a packed schedule um i'm going to be doing a european conference over the pentecostal weekend wow plus we're actually doing two two bible schools there in two different locations plus um i think four four five different churches besides that mm. Uh, yeah, it's a wow. It's a, it, you know, over in 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 Germany, I know there's a lot of different probably denominations. Is is there a lot of Pentecostals? Is what's oh, what's that like? Is oh oh are yeah, they I mean, springing up or no? They've always, they've always been there. Yeah, I and mean, they've you get you've got pretty much the same yeah in the U.S. Maybe not as many, mm -hmm. but but they've got <clears throat> they've got quite a few there. Um, I do think that that Europe needs more churches, you know, like like, for example, you go like in Coshocton, how many churches in your town of how many people? 11,000 people. There's over 100 churches. All right. Now, <laughs> in Germany, you'll go to a city of, say, 
um, 50,000 and there will be one or two Pentecostal churches, a Baptist church. And I mean, I'm also general, but, you know, many of them, that's what there is. You know, it's, it is that way. The, not, a, not a lot of, not yeah. a lot of churches where you are. Wow. So. So, the, but, the the, one, but the ones that are there, you know, that I know of, are doing pretty good. There's, there's really a, 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 an excitement about doing street evangelism and evangelizing on the streets. Wow! And the Holy Spirit moves in the churches there just as just as strong as any other place in the world. So I know you've been going there for years and years. Has there been a growth or change since COVID in the churches? Well, it's my 24th year this year to Europe, and I, to my surprise, I feel the churches came through better other side COVID. Some of them came through better than, not all of them, obviously, but the ones that I know wow. came through better and are doing really fantastic. I mean, I know some of my, the church, my friends that I go to there, they are, they are re doing amazing. Wow. I mean, and it and we can trace it post COVID. Really, it's, it's really interesting. Wow! So yeah. the, the the churches are coming through better, it, and so they're growing and just being oh, healthy yeah. and yeah, wow. Growing wow. street evangelism, you know, like what you're doing, like like um, I saw you this week. I really liked it, by the way, where you you go into the city and you do what do you call it? Church, church in, in the, the city. We just go have church in the city. <laughs> They do that kind of thing. They go, they go oh, in wow. there, and they they do evangelism. They do, they do exactly that. And it's in that I see more and more and more in 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 Europe. It's it's quite it's quite that, exciting. That's so encouraging to hear. It really yeah. is what God's doing over in Europe, places like yeah. Germany. I I have friends uh, in Germany that I was in the same class in Bible school with, and they went over okay. and they started a church. I forgot where exactly, but um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so t last week we s talked about the seven churches. Yes. That was that was pretty epic. And I think we tied in the apostasy issue. Yeah. In there as well, which which is quite unique. But but if you really think of it, Jesus addressed all seven, and only two of them he didn't he didn't bring a correction to. Yeah. You know. So. And I what mean, were those two churches again? Uh, that was the the persecuted church and the faithful church, I believe. Yeah, uh, we'd have to go in and look at no, it, yeah. it, which one they were. But but yeah, the faithful and the persecuted were the ones. Yeah. Yeah, but then the other ones all had different issues, and you know, with with those churches, I heard someone say one time, and I thought it was kind of a good point too. Is in every church, you find kind of a sprinkling of people who are in different like they they could fit into one of those seven churches yeah. you know that That's uh, right. you know they're lukewarm or maybe they lost their first love and uh yeah but so then today we're going to go back even though we started at revelation 2 then we hit revelation 3 now we're actually going to go back we're going to start at revelation 1 and yeah. then we're going to hit revelation 3 and 4 is that correct That's, um no or, I i'm think sorry revelation 4 and 5 Revelation four, yeah. five, yeah. So it's because we yeah, hit because... two and three yeah. last week, and so now That's we're going right. to hit one, four, and five this week, and hopefully just continue right through the book of Revelation. Yep. Well, yeah, I went. I just went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited about this because yeah. I know with these passages, we, well, we see a picture of the resurrected Jesus, and then we even yeah. see kind of get a glimpse to the throne room. Yes. I'm really excited to get into yeah. this tonight. I mean, Revelation 1 is, to me, one of the most um, exciting chapters in the Bible. Yeah. You know? Because it, it just, it's so, it's just a revelation of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is, you know, there, there's a verse in the book of Revelation, I, I can't remember where, but it says that the spirit of prophecy, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. And so you you look at you look at this Revelation one where we're obviously going to see Jesus with hair as white as wool, eyes of the flame of fire, but John gets this revelation of the of the seven year tribulation and the end basically, and it starts the whole thing starts with a revelation of Jesus, and and you know of course verse one of Revelation one one says 
the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. But but you know the, the interesting thing about that the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you go into that word, it 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 means the revealing of Jesus Christ. And if you dig down deeper, it's literally saying <clears throat> the revealing, the coming, the second coming of Jesus, His return. It's about yeah. the revealing of Jesus. He's coming. That's what the book of Revelation is about. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's so true. You know, growing up. I'd hear teaching about Revelation or about the end times, and you'd almost think it's about the revealing of the Antichrist or the mark of the beast, but it's not. You know, it's not. It's the revealing of Jesus and his coming. It's the revealing of Jesus. It's all about him. It, it was from from Genesis through Revelation, because remember, the Bible is a book of the of redemption. It's about the coming of the Messiah. I mean, right at the fall in the garden was the prophecy about the seed of the woman. Yeah. Yes. prophesying Jesus. And then for 4,000 years, we see the Old Testament, or um, it, it's Christ concealed. But it's all about uh, uh, declaring and prophesying about the coming Christ. And then, of course, I mean, we get the book of Revelation that just is, it just sums it up beautifully. You know, <clears throat> he's yeah. coming. He's coming. It's the re revealing of Jesus. You know, the other thing, too, about the book of Revelation is it's, it's not put there to scare us. There, there was somebody telling me this week that there's a guy who is kind of in a place of ministry and he does not want he he doesn't like to read revelation and he doesn't want to study it because it scares him and I thought, <laughs> well, you know well, that book is really there to give us hope for the believer it's there to give yeah. us hope right well you know when you talk to some people about the rapture about the the resurrection of the dead you know changing and twinkling of eye and all that kind of stuff and the second coming of jesus it's like telling them the bad news. It's like, it's like, why? Minute. Why is that? Why do you think that is? I think because they don't understand it. And I think because they're afraid. Yeah. And, and I wonder if they, if they um, actually believe it. Yeah. You know, because you've got to be eternally minded. You remember yes. we, on our very, very first episode, we talked about why why the need for the end time teaching and that and and we talked about the fact that it defines your world view yes so it's it's how you view the world and how what's happening and how it's all gonna it's all gonna be wrapped up how you view that is gonna de it determines how you think yep. how you think of eternity how you how you handle your life right now and so you you share this with them and they think like one guy felt like when Jesus comes back, well, we're going to go. But then when I really spoke to him, it's like he, he thought we'd be these little cherubs with diapers and little wings <laughs> just floating around in heaven somewhere with nothing really going on. And I, I had to explain to him, and, he's, and then he had the question, well, what about my family? What about my plans? What about uh, all that stuff? And I said, no, wait a minute. I said, do you realize this is Jesus come, the kingdom come, our best life begins. Life yes. doesn't end at the second coming. It begins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's almost like what what's sad is even in the church, people think heaven is the place of the dead. And I tell yeah. people it's the place of the living, and the people in heaven are more alive than you are. I tell people all the time, you know, death is not the end. Death is the beginning. It's a door yeah. we're all going to pass through, and it's yeah. not over. This life for the believer is not all all we have, you know. And yeah. Jesus, uh, the Bible references those that have died in Christ as just being asleep. Wow. And that when he comes back, it's like they are just awakened. Yeah. You know, and, those, and then those that remain will be caught up with them. So really, I mean, if you die in Jesus— you, you're not well, dead. You're just sleeping. You're waiting for that day. And yeah. it's what Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Yes. And he was talking about departing from his body, you know. That's right. And, That's and right. so, yeah, there's there's this whole, I mean, in the church, people need the revelation of heaven. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, yeah. Oh, wow. But uh, sure. praise God. Sure.
So, anyway. so, but what's awesome about tonight is I'm sure we're going to make it to Revelation 4. <laughs> and and we do get that glimpse of the throne room. We get the, a glimpse of what heaven is like. And, yeah. uh, and so anyway, where should we begin here? Should we just go ahead and dive in or is there anything you want to add? Well, well, you know, I mean, obviously there's in, in Revelation 1, 1 through 3, you know, it, it's like a introduction of John pretty much yeah you know that he he bore witness and he saw this thing and the blessed verse three blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and keep these those things which are written in it for the time for the time is near but then <clears throat> I tell you what verse four through eight is just a major amazing theology about Jesus. Yeah. And if you think about the revelation being the revealing of Jesus, I mean, I don't know if you just want to read that, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. You yeah. Know? Well, he says, John to the seven church. Well, you know, just, just before I read this, can we just mention briefly, you know, obviously the author is John and yes. this was when he was on exiled the on the Isle of Patmos. And yeah. according to tr tradition, he was there, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it because they were trying to kill him, and they yeah. couldn't kill him? Is that yeah, correct? They, yeah, and it said that it kind of the, the, the it goes like this: that they try to kill him, <clears throat> they try to boil him in oil, mm -hmm. and he didn't die. So you know, being superstitious and all that kind of stuff, they said, "Well, what are we going to do with him?" So they they put him on the island of. Patmos. That's kind of how tradition goes. Yeah. And it's while he was there that he had um, this 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 revelation. But I, I saw a documentary of the Isle of Patmos of those prisons that were there. They were just like caves almost. Hmm. I mean, we, it's not like prisons of today. You know, mm -hmm. and a guy even went into it that if you were put into some of those places, if somebody didn't come and help and feed you or bring you food and that you you could starve wow you know that's that's sort of a thing so um but anyway so i mean it wasn't a comfortable setting that john was in when he had this, this yeah sort of well and i think what's interesting too is in the gospels jesus talked about how john would see him return and yeah. uh you know some people thought that meant he wouldn't ever die but in a sense he did see jesus return by receiving this book you know, you through, through vision for him, you know. <laughs> That's um, a good point, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, because people get confused on that. I've had people come up and ask, you know, well, shouldn't John, is John, I had someone think John was still alive somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know. I can imagine. Yeah. So, okay, well, let's get into this. Uh, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and was and which is to come. And from the seven churches or I'm sorry, and I, I'm I'm actually feeling the anointing right now. <laughs> Hallelujah! Do you want me to go <laughs> verse by verse, or do you want to? Uh... You, well, I mean, I, I tell you what, <laughs> that thing right there is from. <laughs> We're not going to get through this tonight. <laughs> well, because because look at what it's saying there: grace to you and peace from Him who is. And who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits are before the throne look that is and was and is to come that's kingdom that's kingdom talk there because if you get into the the, the 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 like the teaching on the kingdom of god yeah the kingdom has always existed because god is eternal mm. the, kingdom, the kingdom was what, what does that say it's the kingdom who is and who was the kingdom was Jesus came. He was born. Right. He's gone now, but he is to come. So it's it's referencing the kingdom, but it's referencing Jesus mixed in there because then it says, and from the seven spirits who are before His throne, speaking yeah. of the characteristics and that are and the work of the Holy Spirit in all of this, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. The firstborn from the dead. You see, there it is. The firstborn mm. from the dead. So that's where you get in. I believe that's that's the resurrection of the dead. That's the rapture. He's the firstborn because he lives. We live. Wow. 
and he and the ruler over the kings of the earth in other words he has never he is a, he is above all rule and authority and power and kingdom and dominions he is supreme wow. jesus is that to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood there's the cross and the atonement and all that and has made us kings and priests huh. to his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen behold and look as the second coming so 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 think about it those first couple of verses the first fruits from the dead you can really put the the the, the rapture right in there the resurrection of dead wow. now he's talking second coming behold he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him even so amen so there's a second coming and then in verse 8 i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end says the lord and there it is again yeah who is and who was and who is to come and that scripture right there verse 8 is the most powerful because you know that it says we know that in doctrine of who god is we know that god is eternal so there's no beginning and no end to him he lives outside of time but yet yeah he says i'm the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end so what's he talking about can he be eternal but yet be at the beginning and what that's talking about yeah is that he is the lord of time he is the one that has given mankind and if we can get just seven years or seven days or one week or seven thousand years and then wow. it's done and then he talks about kingdom yeah who is always has been always has existed eternal who was first coming and who is to come second coming the almighty Damn. so, so, so that, that, that thing is packed with that's doctrine. what i'm saying we we could just stay right here and <laughs> preach for like three weeks you know yeah we'd, we just skimmed over a whole bunch of things there about dominion and and uh, made us kings and priests to a god and you know the, the whole thing it's 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 yeah. the revelation of jesus yeah wow so john to the seven churches which are in asia grace be unto you peace from him which is which was and which is to come and yeah. from the seven spirits which are before the throne we were talking about this earlier, but the clear up, I'm sure people are wondering on the stream, what, what does it mean by when it, it, the, this, you know, John is writing about the seven spirits which are before his throne. I had one person ask, are there seven Holy Spirits? And, no, uh, but no. briefly, I know there's a passage in Isaiah, you know, that's a reference to something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Isaiah 11. And it's basically talking about the characteristics or the working of the Holy Spirit in 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 christ through christ and everything that is happening on the earth he's mm. come in the is was and is to come you know he's working in there and so you get these these seven spirits because look it 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 connects it to him um where it says and who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before the throne and later on in chapter four and five it you'll see it'll talk about the lamb of god full of so, uh, I believe it's seven horns, seven eyes, and then it says that which are the seven spirits of God, mm. and and we'll 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 see that it it references to Isaiah or Isaiah eleven, which is really making reference to the menorah, the the golden lampstands, you know, where you get the main stick down the middle, and then the three on each side, which makes seven. Okay. And, and you'll see how in Isaiah 11 it splits it. The Spirit of the Lord is a, is is upon you, and that's the Spirit of counsel and might, wisdom. You know, and it goes down through that. So it's like uh, a sevenfold working of the Spirit is is yes. what that's talking about. It's not talking about a, a literal. There are seven different spirits. No, no, yeah. no. There's one. There's one Holy Spirit. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And it says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. 
My and, goodness. <laughs> and, <laughs> amen. <laughs> and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Do you, what, what, what's that saying there? It says he's made us kings and he's made us priests. What What, what is yeah. that? Well, you know, God's, origi- God's intent in the covenant is to... Is, you know, now, this is a whole thing in, in and of itself. Sure, is that we, we are we are not we are not robots. We are not servants in the king's household. We are we are kings and priests. And if you go into the new covenant, the the two that you see the, the the Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant, you see very much front and center within the new covenant. The Davidic being king having dominion over your the, the enemies of, of God and and all that and then the Abrahamic covenant which is the the priestly and this is actually something that is known as the zodiac priesthood or or the Melchizedek priesthood which is makes reference to both king and priest and so it's so in Christ in that covenant that he made because of who he is he he's the firstborn of many brethren so he invites us into that and so in him, we are kings in that we now have dominion because of him, hmm. but we are also priests. We can now worship him in his spirit and truth and, wow. and and all that kind of stuff. So we are kings and priests in the household of God. And, and, I, and I believe that's in first or second Peter chapter two, it talks about the house of God being made up of living stones and we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And all that before before God, and that so um, that's what we are. We are called to have dominion and victory, but we are also called to we can boldly approach the throne of grace and know we will not be turned away. Wow, that's awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah, and has made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And I Amen. love this in verse seven. Behold, yeah. he cometh with the clouds, yes. and every eye shall see oh. him, uh-uh. and, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. You know, when I read that, I was thinking earlier when I was skimming through the, the, the chapter preparing for tonight of Daniel 7, and I, I just had it up here for when we hit this verse, but it says in Daniel 7, uh, in verse 13, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all peoples and nations and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. That's yeah. awesome. An everlasting, everlasting kingdom. <laughs> so he comes with, with the clouds, and every eye will see him, and, and even those that <laughs> pierce him. So th- this specific passage, this is talking about not the rapture, it's talking about the second coming at the uh, end of yeah, the tribulation. Well, right? the, the, key, the key statement there, he is coming with, in the clouds or with the with clouds, you know. Yeah, uh, that's that second coming. Because, yeah. I mean, in X, uh, I believe X chapter one, it it when when he's ascending and they're looking, the angels on either side say, "Why are you looking in this way?" The same way that he's gone, he will return. Mm. You know, so so that's a definite reference to the second coming. Yeah. Wow. I believe. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. So what's this talking about here? Well, that's that's what I mentioned to you about the fact God is eternal, so there is no beginning and end. So he's not talking about himself. What he's saying there is that he is the, he is the one that defines, he's the beginning and the end of, of history or the time allotted to man. Yeah. I, you and, know, as a pastor, I've had new believers come up and you get this question sometime, well, who created God? <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, <laughs> it, you, you have to understand God created time. 
you know, he 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 invented that. You know, there there's no beginning with him. You know, and That's he right. is the beginning. He created the beginning, created the That's end. That's right. You know, he, he, yeah, he is the Lord of time, and that is actually one of the the things that Jesus holds. That he holds, uh, you know, in Hebrews chapter one, it says he holds all things together by the word of his his power. And and if you go into that and you study it out, it's talking about he holds time together. And like I mentioned, you know, I believe that God has allotted man one week, seven days, a day being as a thousand years, seven thousand years. Hmm. And if you really get into it, so he is the beginning, he is the end man has been allotted this amount of time hmm. and uh, and and then obviously who is and who was and is to come is reference to kingdom yeah kingdom, it's like kingdom talk you know he's eternal he has come he is or who was first coming and who is to come second coming you know the almighty mm. yeah powerful so then he goes on, he says, uh, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation in, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet mm. saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And, and of course, we, 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 looked, we looked at what he said to them last week. <laughs> yep, those next two chapters we, yeah. we covered. And he says, And I turned to see the voice which spake to me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in a garment down to the mm. foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head uh, and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, and as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in its strength <laughs> and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death Write the things which thou seest, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou seest are the seven churches. Yeah. Awesome. See, there, there's the revelation of Jesus. Now, um, I heard one guy point out something that I did not realize, but it, it made sense that this picture of Jesus right here is a picture of Jesus the judge hmm. Th think of it Jesus came the first time to bring salvation forgiveness and all this but if you get into this now that was Christ the judge you you saw the image of the white hair the whole thing it's he's coming he's coming to reckon mm. with the world and with the with all of that right now and and it's it's interesting to me how many times it gets repeated, you know, I, like he who lives and who was dead and who is to come. The, I'm the first and the last, you know. Do not be afraid, you know. All all that kind of terminology is repeated often when it comes to Jesus. But mm -hmm. this first chapter just lays it out. That look, it's about Jesus is coming back. It's uh, he's returning get ready it's soon this is him this is what he's done from the from heaven to the cross from the cross to the tomb from the tomb to the throne <laughs> he is he is the lord over everything over all principality power you know that there is he he, he and he, i love this part i'm the first and the last i'm he who lives and was dead 
in this is verse 17 and 18, I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell, death, and the grave. <laughs> now, I've introduced myself to you. <laughs> Eyes at flame of fire. Hair as white as wool. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, face shining like a, a sun. Now, now you know. Now you see who who this is that's giving you this revelation. Now go and give it to the churches. And uh, I mean, now wonder. John fell at his feet like a dead man. I mean, he didn't look to Jesus and just say, "Oh, it's it's only you," you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to him with a lamb under his arm and sandals, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sharp, a... two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, and we know that sword represents the word. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. And then his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And yeah. uh yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So so again, that's a picture of Jesus as judge. Yeah, that's yep. So so you can which is amazing to me, and, and we'll see this in chapter four and five, but the Lamb of God is the one that bring it's his wrath and his judgment in the end. Hmm. And and there's no one else more righteous and worthy than him to be doing those things. Wow. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. So it goes from there, and now Jesus is saying we have these seven candlesticks and uh, the, the, the what was it, the seven stars, and yeah. he's talking about these are the, the seven churches, you know, the, the uh, or the, the stars are the angels of the seven churches, the candlesticks are the, are the churches. Yeah. And then we covered last week, we went into those seven churches and what Jesus was saying to those churches and what it means to us today. We talked about apostasy. And so we're going to go right into Revelation 4, uh, just mm -hmm. a couple chapters over. And yeah. so this is after he's done addressing the churches. What, That's what, right. what I think is wild about the book of Revelation is how many times the churches reference in the first three chapters of the book and like I forgot, I counted one time, I forgot how many times, but many times. But then from Revelation 4 onward, you don't see the church referenced really until the end of no, the chapter. It, it doesn't, but it is interesting. It does reference believers and saints. Yes. And I, I heard a, a guy that is just really amazing with the subject say it like this. It's naive to believe that there aren't those that do start to believe or do believe during the seven-year tribulation yeah and who are they they are believers they are saints they just not part of the of the of the crowd the church basically the bride that went in the in the, in the rapture yeah but it's, but it, it it references the fact that there are those that believe so who are they they are believers yeah they are saints. So, because that's what some people say. Well, no, it, it mentions believers and it mentions saints. So that's the church. Well, the church, the bride has been taken, but there are those that that end up believing. I mean, I can imagine if the church is taken. I mean, estimated how many people would disappear off the planet. There are people that will know the truth. What about the five foolish virgins that got left behind? They they know. They very much well know. It might just cause them to, I mean, we don't know what the response would be. I mean, uh, I can't imagine having a knowledge of the truth and suddenly you realize it's happened and you didn't go. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of wailing and there's going to be a lot of, uh, I mean, falling on your knees and crying out to God. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, yeah. and, and, and the, there will be people that who will get saved during that seven-year tribulation, uh, mm -hmm. and, and as far as salvation is the same as just like we're saved. They're going to be it. saved, but they're not yeah. going to be the bride of Christ. So it's going to be, right. the re even the rewards would be different at, at the judgment. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a whole different, it, it, salvation's the same, but kind yeah. of the status of the church age, the bride is yeah. they've kind of lost out on that yes so but i know where you are going in verse one year chapter four yeah i'm excited <laughs> about that one <laughs> because because really to me that verse one 
says and and after these things so you you got to so okay does is it just saying yeah well after the event we spoke to him about the church or does it actually make a reference to and after the these things the church been taken because yeah. i mean now some people will argue with us on this verse but i think verse one is as clearer as is a very clear reference to the taking up and or the catching away of the church right there i agree um, you know yeah because you you had those two chapters really three chapters where the lord's dealing with the church age and he's dealing yeah. with those seven churches and That's it right. concludes at the end of chapter 3, well, right here, the next verse, Revelation 4, verse 1, he says, after these things. Exactly. After these things. I believe that's making a reference, yes, to the church age, Yeah. to uh, draw, come to a close. Now, after this thing, you know, behold, a door standing open in heaven. I mean, yes, you know. Yeah, I mean, and you... even even when you read those seven churches, Jesus was talking to them about, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial that's going to test the whole world. And obviously, he's referencing the things that are going to be wrote out throughout Revelation. Yeah, that's the, uh, I believe that's the, is that the Philadelphia church? Let I believe. Have, a, yeah, because we're, right. we, we're making reference to that church. It's Revelation yeah. 3.10, I think. Yeah, Philadelphia, yeah. Because you have kept my word to persevere, Revelation 3.10, I also will keep you from the hour, uh, the hour of trial, which comes upon the whole world to test those who dwell on it. And then I think there's a few verses before that or after that it says, and uh, I will open the door and no man can shut it. Or is that hmm. a persecuted church? Um, behold, and it says, behold, I'm coming quick. So, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's it's definitely making reference. And I mean, if you look at Revelations 4, 1, it says a door standing open in heaven. And we mm. know Jesus is a, de a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like, like a, a trumpet. trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. And I mean, what does it say in Thessalonians? It says the sound of a trumpet, the, sound, the voice of the archangel, the sound of the trumpet, and... So it happens. So, yeah. I mean, I think... And then we go up. And and that's what yeah. he's saying, come up here. The, the, that come door to here. heaven opens. There's a trumpet. Come up here. I'm going to show you. So this is this is that. It's pointing, I believe with all my heart, it's pointing towards a Look, look, look at that. A come up here. Yep. It's a catching away. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Wow. Yeah. See, that end part, I never caught that either. But, you, yep. You know, so I mean, after what? After exactly. the seven well, churches, and the catching away, and the open door, and the trumpet, and the voice—all <laughs> the language is there. <laughs> yeah, I think we can rest our case on that. <laughs> you know, now, but, know but a, yeah, I, I know yeah. there'll be those that that argue with us on it. But hey, you know, we have our conviction, and they have theirs, and that's okay. That's okay. It, yeah, it, it it is. Um, yeah. So in, then he says, immediately I was in the spirit and behold, mm -hmm. a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a <laughs> jasper and yeah. a sardis mm -hmm. stone uh, in yeah. appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald and around the throne, <laughs> you know, we're going to get to see this one day <laughs> that, it's going to be pretty amazing yeah that's why you know as we were talking at the beginning people you know they think heaven you're you know it it's going to be great it's going to be amazing yeah. you know so uh around the thrones were 24 uh, 24 thrones and on the thrones i saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads and from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So there that is again. There that it reference. Is. And so he's talking about these lamps of fire, which are the seven spirits. So that's that reference to the menorah of the, the candle. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it keeps going, but uh, just... To, to hit a few things here, a few points, we, we have the throne, the, the one who's seated, that's obviously the Father, right? 
Yeah, I, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he who sat on it was was like a jasper, sardis stone in appearance. And wow, I mean, <laughs> what a sight. Now, now we have these 24 thrones, and he saw these 24 elders sitting in white robes. Now, what's that? Who, who are these people? You know, there are as many theories as there are people that are convinced about who they are. But the, the truth is, and I'm looking at the commentary down here, yeah. It's saying, um, let me, it's, it's saying the 24 elders, the identity of the elders is not certain. You know, some think that they represent the church or believers in heaven, some Israel, some both. But really, the truth is, the truth is, we, we're not certain. I mean, some people really get into it and they go into a deep study, but I don't know. I think we'll, we'll find out when we get there. Yeah, I, I've i heard a lot of different appear, uh, you know, opinions. Exactly. But what you said, we, we aren't certain. We can't say, well, we know it's this because of X, Y, and Z. We can speculate. We uh, can speculate, yes. Yeah, I mean, I've heard things, you know, anywhere from, okay, well, that's, you know, the, the saints. I, I've heard, I heard one person say, well, that could be the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles, you know. Or exactly, a combination of both, yeah. Yeah, or heavenly beings, you know, types of angels or, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, in First Chronicles 24, there were uh, 24 divisions of priests who served yeah. in the temple. Could be a reference yeah. to that, but we don't, yeah. Yeah. we don't know. It could be. I don't be, think we have enough. I think it, God deemed it that we we have enough he, what he told us here is is not that he's explaining everything. It's just that he wants to give the image of the throne. And one, you know, one day the, when we see this throne, we're going to say, that's that's those 24 elders. <laughs> that's who they are. That's what they're doing. So, so yeah. you know, but, but think about it. You get this throne, rainbow around it, appearance like an emerald, which I believe an emerald is... Am I well? You get different color emeralds, but green usually yeah. green, green, and and that you know, and this ra rainbow, like and the jasper and sardia stone, which I believe is um, red, and different. Uh, they they different colors. You know, I've looked all these things up already. <laughs> yeah, you know, but but the point is, there's this multifaceted of colors, and 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 there's and then there's these twenty four elders and God seated on his throne i mean it's majestic it's glorious it's powerful you yes. know i mean it, you know and then there's these 24 elders around it but i love verse five you know because you get that setting and then it says and from the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings <laughs> and voices in, in other words this this place is alive it's vibrant with the glory and the power of god i mean it's 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 shaking you know with 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 the lord you know and his glory and his power and his majesty i mean it's 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 i can't imagine what john thought when he saw this <laughs> yeah i mean you know last sunday we had a meeting after church it was just supposed to be kind of just going over some things with the worship team and the glory of god came in and i mean just totally almost unexpected we just started to pray and his presence just overwhelmed yeah. us and uh someone from my church who was in the meeting he texted me he said man i've just been under the anointing ever since that meeting and just laughing crying and uh you know and you think this is why we're going to have to have glorified bodies because we just get the a little glimpse and a little taste of his presence on this side of eternity and it totally unglues us but can you imagine standing here what i mean just well this we, is this this is the center of it this is because <laughs> you know the one thing when you get into god is like being um, omni omnipotent or powerful and all that the whole idea behind god is that He's not trying to get power by plugging it into a source. He <laughs> is. That's why he says, I am. He is. The, uh, it's even wrong to say he's the source because he is. It, he is self-aware. It is what he is. It's, he, it is who he is. So, so if you think of this all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present God, eternal, glorious, this is him right here, seated on that throne. Mm. 
I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know you don't want to miss the rapture <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and, no you uh, don't want to miss. there there really isn't there's nothing on this side of eternity worth getting distracted over getting offended and you know being taken out or led astray or distracted from this i mean what god has prepared for those what was it say eye is not seen ear is not heard it's not yeah. entered into the heart of man what god has prepared to those for those who love him and uh yeah. you know if you're on the stream just fall in love with him even more in 24 than you ever have yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it goes on to say before the throne there was a sea of glass what does that even look like a, a, a sea of glass like crystal um and in the midst of the throne and around the throne there were these four living creatures full of eyes in the front and in the back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. And the third creature had a face like a man. And the fourth uh, living creature was flying like an eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. They do not, th and they do not rest day or night, saying, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power you created created all things and by your will they exist and were created there you see there you see i mean you know what pops into my head god is not man and man <laughs> is not god <laughs> he is the creator i mean think about it you are worthy O oh lord to receive glory and for you created all things because think of it Everything exists. Everything is yeah, being created because of this God seated right here. Mm. And it says, well, you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So, I mean, mm. and, and these living creatures that, that uh, it, you know, they, they seem strange. They seem out of this world, but it's because they are. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're around. They're around Almighty God's throne. Yeah, and you and you know it's 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 majestic. It's powerful. It's it's that's why they they said Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, and there it is. Who was, and who is, mm. and who is to come. So there there it is again. The kingdom. The, the, yeah, you know the, he's dealing with man, and whenever the living creatures give glory, man, it's just powerful. We can read this through <laughs> yeah yeah and you know again even with these creatures i'm sure that there, there's symbolism there and what they represent oh, yeah. i don't know if you have oh, yeah. anything but you know i, uh, I again I, I i think it's another one of those things like the elders you know we we can speculate well, a few things you know you know some you know i've got it down yeah some say the lion the cock the man and the eagle <laughs> uh, some believe it's referring to the four gospels yeah the distinctive portrayals of christ um but but you know yeah yeah uh, yeah and and i've heard uh, another uh person talking about um how it could represent the placements of the tribes of israel so you had judah you yes. had the lion you know yeah. you had reuben was represented a man you know so again it falls into that category where well, you can speculate but yeah. but that's what we want to say to people looking watching you know we're not trying to pick apart every single verse yeah. that's not what we're trying to do yeah because yeah in verse seven about the living creatures like a line second we could spend a month just on that right there because like you say it's symbol there's so much so much symbolism and meaning in all that but the point is i think what we're trying to bring across here is just what this is the throne the throne yeah. of god 
where all this revelation of what is about to come on the earth is being revealed out of god yeah. is revealing it from his throne you know and and all revelation you know one thing if you study the throne of god you see his glory his power his voice but then you also see he always reveals things he's the revealer and so this is about the revelation of jesus and also about that which will come and which will happen on the earth right now mm. you know in I think another point, and, and then we'll get to Revelation 5 here, but, you know, another point that just kind of came to me it, it, to understand the book of Revelation, if you read Revelation 1 and um, in, in, in verse 1, and it says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God uh, gave him to show his servants. Now, look at this. Things which must uh, shortly take place, and he That's sent right. and signified it by his angel to his servant John. The, the book of Revelation, God is, is speaking to the church, but that word signified is really important because God is, is giving a message to the church in symbolic form. Yeah. And so that's why the book of Revelation is so rich in its symbolism yeah. because that's how the Lord wanted it. And, and yeah. uh, so anyway. Uh, and obviously his angel, the angel there is a messenger. Yes. No, in other words, it's been it's been brought to him by a messenger, you know. Yeah. So yeah. last chapter here going into Revelation five and then, of course, in six, I believe it gets into the seals. Is that right? That's well, yeah. So yep, that's right. first seal, chapter six. So then it says in verse one of chapter five, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals and no one no, in what's you know so, sorry to interrupt no, yeah. you but sometimes we when we go to chapter four and then we say chapter five it's like we take chapter four and we say okay we're done with that yeah but what we're reading yeah is still in that setting yes you know, yeah. I just wanted to, just well, wanted to throw that out. Uh, you know, there are people who don't know that uh, the Bible wasn't originally wrote in chapters and verses. That's First, right. First, they gave it chapters, and then it was uh, quite a while later, they then split it up into different verses. So, yeah, yeah, it's... it's. So you could think of it like this. He's caught up into heaven. He's before the throne of God. I'm going to show you what happens now on the earth. And then everything that begins to happen... He sees it from that point of view. He sees mm. it from the throne, and he sees it unfold all the way to the end. Mm. You know, that's it's it's really interesting. Yeah. So it says, "Who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals?" And no one in in heaven, or on the earth, or under the earth, was able mm. to open the scroll or look at it. And so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth, and he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's that's obviously, you know, verse 5, the line of the... And, and this is, once again, you know, what we said, Jesus is the only one worthy to bring judgment. And, and think of it like this. If you were going to be judged, would you want to be judged by somebody that is at fault themselves <laughs> or has, or, or, you know, you yes. know what I mean? Yeah. He is worthy to open the scroll because he is the lamb of God. He is spotless and without sin. Mm. And so he is the one that, that it doesn't matter who you are or when you lived at what time you lived. He is the one that has the right or is worthy or who can judge you because he is perfect. Hmm. 
And so that's why he says, you know, don't weep. Look, look here, there's, there is this lamb. It was slain. He's the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, which is all references to the Messiah and to, to Messianic references. And who has prevailed to open the scroll? In other words, he he has risen to the task. He is worthy. He he he, he qualifies, you know, and to loosen its seven seals. Hmm. You know, and, and then, of course, I mean, um, in verse 6, it says, And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, obviously reference to Jesus and the cross, <laughs> having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out in, in all the earth. You know, Born speak of obviously of power, strength, and authority, and rule, and and all that. So you know the eyes and the horns. It's it's referencing that he. And if you go into the book of Colossians and and I believe um, Ephesians chapter one, where it makes reference that he is above Jesus is is, is ascended to the right hand of the Father above all principality, power, rulers, and you know and dominion. In other words, he is supreme authority, he is supreme rulership, hmm. and 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 that. So you get the you get the seven horns, the seven eyes, the seven spirits, and and like we talked about, the seven spirits of God is the work of the Holy Spirit, his involvement in all of this. Hmm. You know, so you know he took the scroll in his right hand from him who sat on the throne. So so who hands him the the the, the scroll? Well, it came from the one on the throne. And who is that? Which would be the Father. He hands it to the Lamb and says, okay, you're the one that is worthy. Hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, there is a side of it that the cross, the blood, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his glorification, all of that talks of salvation, but also qualifies and puts him in the position to be the judge at the end. Hmm. And and this is a powerful um, picture of it. Yeah, and again, it goes into what this book is all about, which is revealing Jesus. The revealing of Jesus, and, yeah. and it talks about this lamb as though it had been slain. I think one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible is that other reference that says the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. I think that blows my mind. I know you talk about it, you know, every so often how even before the foundation of the world, that covenant that God had made, is that's that called the, uh, the everlasting covenant, right? That's right. So whenever you see God foreknew or uh, foreordained or preordained, it's talking about that everlasting covenant. And the way you understand this is just like what we read here, who who is and who was and who is to come. He always has has been. He's he's always existed. He knows everything. You and people some people say, Well, I don't understand that. Well, yeah, of course you don't. You <laughs> are not God. Those are those are, are things that belong to him. He knows. He understands. And and like one person said, Well, these are the mysteries of God. You know, these are the messages of God. And you see those um, living creatures with eyes full of eyes and going, holy, 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 when they see when they see the Lord in all his in all his ways. So. So, yeah, I mean, that everlasting covenant is a is a is an aspect of God's. God being eternal yeah. outside of time. Yeah, man. All it's, right. it's amazing. So it goes on. It says. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Yeah. So, you have anything to add to that? Well, um, the golden bowls and the prayers of the saints... You know, when you when you go into when you go in through the book of Revelation, you're going to see language like this: How long will it be? The you know the the because the prayer of the saints and the persecution and and all that is there. I think it's it's really making a reference is that every person that has suffered 
for the name for for Christ's sake, been persecuted, martyred, whatever we've done where wrong was done to us. An account has been has been made. It's wow. been you know a, if you like a book has been kept, account kept, and there's these these golden bowls full of incense because Jesus is saying, look here. Many Christians, sometimes when they go through those things, they say, God, don't you care? Did you not see? I believe he sees absolutely everything. Oh, yeah. And some of those people died. Some of those people that did wrong died without an account being made towards their wrong. Well, guess what? God has not forgotten, and the day of reckoning is coming whether it's those who are still alive on the earth when this all goes down or at the end, at the day of judgment. Mm. So, you know. Yeah, no one gets away with anything. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing. You know, even when we as the righteous stand before him, it says we are going to have to give an account for that which we did and did not do. Yes. <laughs> so that alone should put the fear of God in you because, okay, I'm safe. I'm playing it safe. I'm going to do nothing. Well, what is required of you, you know, what you did and did yeah. not do. So so you see these golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And he has an interesting thing, because some people say, well, who are these people? Are they, that's the church. So there's proof that they on, on but, but it says, but they sang a new song, hmm. a new song. In other words, this is a different thing now. They sang a new song saying, you are worthy to, they are from that perspective. They are singing from there. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you are slain and have <laughs> redeemed us to God by your blood. Oh, wow. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to, to our God and we shall reign on the earth. You know, oh. um, you know it's, Yeah. Well, so that tells us who the elders are. They are man, redeemed men. Well, if yeah, they that's sing what, that song that you redeemed that's us. What, that's what some people say. Yeah, huh. but but you know they they say the elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song, saying, "You're yeah, you're exactly right." You see, this is the this is the whole thing. Are they redeemed? Who are they? Are they, um, you know? Are they yeah. old covenant, new covenant believers? What what are they? I don't think it makes any difference because it's it Jesus is involved here. <laughs> yeah. It says it's the prayer of the saints. Hmm. You know? Yeah, it says they sing a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out yeah. of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. You, you see, that's why. Because look at it. You have made us, yeah, um, redeemed us by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Now that's hmm. that's referencing a whole bunch of people there. Yes. Yeah. You know. So these and, twenty-four, it, it's quite possible that they actually represent more than just these 24 they they represent humanity in some way would you well it could says you they see took that? the elders slash kings you know they yeah they have demeaned you know so it could very well be and and for those that are watching you know we're just unpacking it we're seeing things we we we, 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 we but we, we we're looking at the wording here and it really does look that way but you know like i say that's why it's 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 some of the stuff there there are many different uh views and things on it but I, i'm yeah. with you zach i'm with you zach i mean it's obviously speaking about more people than just the the 24. yeah yeah out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation there's more than 24 tribes and more than 24 tongues and more than 24 nations that's so, exactly right. so i i see them as referencing you know, yes, people, you know, and it's a new song. They sing a new song. You mm. know. So verse 11, 
It says, Then I looked, and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures. I think that's interesting. It makes a distinction between angels and then creatures. But anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah we won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just, just, uh, yeah. And that's elders. And, yeah, elders. And, and the elders. And the yeah. number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. <laughs> yeah, in other words, just a whole bunch of a lot of. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, saying with a loud voice, hallelujah. You know, it, it man, praise <laughs> God. Uh, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and and, and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne into the Lamb forever and ever. Then the f- <laughs> the four living creatures said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Mm. Hallelujah. It's amazing. And then, of course, nice. it goes into Revelation 6, which in the next stream I'm sure we'll get more into. But he says, now, yeah. now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice like thunder, come and see. And then I, uh, I looked and behold a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering in the conquer. I'm sure we're going to get more into these. But yeah. how, how long have we been going for now, Isaac? Only a little bit over an hour. Because, you know, I, I want us to take us back to verse 13 there. Yeah. Of Revelation uh, fire and it says and every creature okay every creature created all right which is in heaven on earth and under the earth hmm. and such are are in the sea and all that are in them now the, the, the interesting thing is because there is so much symbolism in there. Now, when you think of, I'm going to just throw a bunch of questions. What do you think is talking about of every creature which is in heaven? Well, it, it mentioned angels and creatures. Okay. So, but, yeah. But, but, but wouldn't... beyond beyond like heaven or the heavens, like the celestial like, space. I, I I would think it's talking about um, uh, what you call Elohim. Elohim. It's a, a, a spirit creature, spirits. Okay. All right. Which is angels or uh, uh, principalities, powers, or, demons, or, or, principalities, yeah. powers, and all that. And then on the earth, man. Okay. Mm. And then under the earth. Now, who's under the earth? Well, that would be Hades. That'd be hell. Yeah. That's that would be then, of course, the demons. Okay. Yeah. And this is just a thought. Yeah. Let's no, just, I'm I'm following you. And uh, demons and such are in the sea. Now, now, symbolically speaking, the sea in in the Book of Revelation well, often references that's the, the that's the squid demon, right? <laughs> No, no, I'm following you. Sorry, no, no, you threw me off there. But but the sea often references the the Gentile nations. That's right, and all, and all that are in them. So you see, the spirit world, man, the the the, and and actually, whenever it talks about the earth, because I think we get into chapter seventeen or nineteen where it talks about the, the 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 dragon or the beast that comes from the sea and from the land yes sea speaking of gentile nations land speaking of of israel yeah so it says i think of it so every creature which is in heaven so those the, uh, spirit beings whatever and on the earth okay man or, or earth or land which could be speaking of the of israel and mm. under the earth the demonic and such as are in the sea, the Gentile nations, and all that are in them. And if you if you really 
get into the book of Revelation, you begin to find out that that Jesus, as the judge or, or his second coming, he's coming to deal with basically the rebellion. Hmm. Okay. Yes. And if you if you get into now, there's an interesting thing. I think we and you and I talked about this, which you see him dealing with these things. And it, you know, yeah. we as as Christians, when we think of sin coming into the world, what event do we do we think of always? Uh, the garden. We think of the garden. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, Eve Eve was deceived, but Adam sinned, and all the ladies say yes. You know, but anyway, <laughs> he, he was deceived. Adam sinned, but we stop there. Yeah. But the full story of rebellion and of sin goes like this. There's the original sinner, Satan. Yeah. Now, is does does Jesus deal with him in the book of Revelation? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Then there's Adam. Mm -hmm. Does Jesus deal with, with Adam or, or man? Man, yes. Yes, he absolutely does. But then you but then you also see those um, um Genesis six where mm. the the sons of, of God come and sleep with the women and we know that giants are yeah. are the result and there's that whole rebellion. Does he deal with them? I, I would say, say yeah. so. Yeah. I would say so. And then you get the Tower of Babel where they said, well, we're going to come together and do our own thing. We are going to be one, one, one tongue, one everything. And I mean, if you see in the book of Revelation, what does the Antichrist try to do? He tries to bring in one world government, one world religion, one world everything. And so does Jesus deal with that? Yes, he does. So, so you see, he comes in. He he judges the devil. Hmm. He judges man. He judges those those um, fallen angels, principalities, and powers. And he takes he, he judges um, Babylon and the beast and all that stuff. Hmm. It's it basically he reaches back and he says, "Okay, yes, my judgment on the fall." Hmm. in every one of those areas. And you see it wrapped up in the book of Revelation. And I think that is one of the reasons why you get so much symbolism and that in the book of Revelation is because it's referencing both spiritual things and natural things. Yeah. It's it's dealing with the fall or the or the rebellion yeah. that is summed up in those four events. Wow. Yeah. So I and that's why that verse 13 is so interesting. Mm, yeah. Because it's the heavens, the earth, the land, under the earth, and the sea and all that is in them. It's it's like it covers all of them. But it, then it says, and all of them I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on a throne and to the so, lamb forever and ever. Is this the every knee bowing, every tongue confessing? <laughs> I think so. I think that's where that's actually what wow. I was going to say. Because in the every end, knee bows, every knee. In the end, every knee, exactly. You know, <laughs> Philippians too. You know, in the yeah. end, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord. You know, and and so it's 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 interesting. It's the wrapping up of things from Genesis chapter one, wow. <laughs> and everything that happened all the way through. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, because it, 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 it is easy to think it's just about the garden and man's sin, you know, because, you know, with with the Bible, you, you read it through it. Obviously, it's all reference what we're talking about, but it's it's easy to think it's just about that, about the garden. But then there is that the, that rebellion of Lucifer and the the principalities, the powers, the, the angels that disobeyed and demon yeah. spirits. And so he's dealing with all of this all of that all of it and i mean in the end you see him he's taking the false prophet mm. the beast and all of them and throwing them into the into the lake of fire or whatever you know so yeah. it, it's basically he's he's dealing with all of that and i think the reason why i bring it up now is because i think it's a good thing to have that in your mind 
when you start venturing into chapter six with the seals and the trumpets and then you know and and all of this that's happening there and you then you see you know the beast and the dragon and you wonder what the heck's going on with all that stuff well because and it almost seems like there's this entity or this power or this devil that's working in the background well that's exactly it it mm. is it goes back to the original rebellion and that is what god is judging and dealing with wow to, and obviously man as well man's re uh, sin and rebellion you know? yeah yeah and then uh of course we know the end result of of all of that it, it the end of the book of revelation it says that lucifer the satan he's going to be tormented day and night forever and ever <laughs> absolutely you know, you're know. looking forward to that so it goes back into an eternal judgment on them too you know yes yeah they and 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 here's the thing they know it they know yeah. what's coming because who was do, it do, you, do you think that they are deceived to think that they can still escape judgment or do they know that they're gonna lose what do you think oh i think they I think they know. They know. Yeah. I, I can't believe that. That they're um, deceived to think that they're going to win or? Well, of course, look at those demons that Jesus came to that one man and the, the devil spoke out of him and said, have you come to, oh, to wow. talk with us before our time? Yeah, I get what you're saying. You know? The, the, so they do year. know that their time is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and even in James, it talks about, you know, faith without works, but it says, you know, you fear God, but even the demons fear God, and they tremble. You know, they believe God, and they, they fear him. It's in the book Think of about this. Think about this. From Satan falling to those demons, and, yeah, I mean, sorry, forgive me, scratch that. Yeah. From the original sinner to the rebellion of the, of the, of the angels and man. Mm-hmm. Which one of those did God make a redemptive plan and solution for? It's only man. The others he didn't. Hmm. And they know it. They were all rejected. He didn't make a he didn't make a redemptive plan for them. Wow. Only for man. Do you think that's why Lucifer hates man? Oh, it, I'm it, pretty or, sure. Yeah. Do you think there's more to it, or you think that's the main thing? Is that they were that God loved man enough to redeem them? Yeah, or there's is probably it, that and more to it. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess he you know, wanted to ascend too. He wanted yeah. even before man. Yeah, because he said, "I want to be like the Most High. I want to ascend into the sides of the north." Yeah. You know, I, I basically I want to be God, and 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 he he rebelled. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. But I think about that with you know, beyond Lucifer, but like demon spirits, you know, what they, their bone to pick with man is, you know, uh, especially depending on where we think demons came from, you know, whether it was pre-Adamic oh. or whether it was something during <laughs> Noah. I know now we're do getting you, into some things. <laughs> do you really want to get into all that? <laughs> <laughs> well, since it's brought up, now I'm start, my brain is going, you know. But, uh, well, you know, it, but they, either way, they were all rejected, these disembodied spirits, demon spirits, if, if you go that direction, well, you know. Well, you know, I got into I got into doctrine, OK, and I kind of fell into it because I was thinking of Finney and who were the other great um, preachers of, oh. of, of the 1800s? The, George the Winfield, Jonathan Edwards. All and I and I thought, what did they preach? So I went back and I saw that they basically preached doctrine. Yes. So I that's what got me interested in it. All right. So I I started to um, study doctrine and and so that's how I discovered all these things. So what I'm about to tell you is actually in the do books of biblical doctrine. So it's nothing new. No, it's nothing new. So yeah. here, here it goes. Okay. All right. I just the the doctrine of sin. Yeah was the original sinner satan then is the garden all right um eve was deceived adam sinned and then you get genesis 6 where it says the sons of god or the the, the those angels came and and slept with women and then you get the nephilim or the giants that came out of it now think about that those giants came into being they eventually died they were 
not part of God's creation. Yeah. They were they were basically a hybrid of they, man they were, and and these angel. angels. Yeah. Or, or, or you yeah. so so if you think of it, there was no there was no um, uh, redemption. They're not fully angel. human, and they're not fully angel, and it's not even something God created, you know, no, or intended. Now, that, now that's where they believe demons came from. Hmm. So when these when, things died. Died. Their so spirits. spirits were disembodied, hmm. and so they went out to look, and that's that's where they believe. That's that's what they believe. Where they believe demons came from. So unclean spirits, spirits all, of infirmity that the New Testament talks about. All that, all that stuff. So that know. that's one belief of where, you know, they believe demons originated from. So that would have been. Uh, that would have been at the flood then, when God wiped everything out, because it was so bad he had to flood the earth. I mean, sin yeah. was so bad. Yeah, you know? and I mean, there's a lot of um, <laughs> writings and things yeah. that, that back up this thing, yeah. and why why in the doctrines, the Bible doctrine, they actually, that this is what is taught. This is in the doctrines of the Bible. Mm. You know, if you yeah. go and you study doctrine, is because I mean so so it's not it's not Vincent and Zach's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's yeah. actually it's actually there. And you know, when I first came across it, I thought, man, this is like sci fi. We could make a really good movie out of this. This is crazy, you know. But that's actually where the because you know, I also yeah. thought of okay, demons come from pre Adamic. Yeah. And there was this whole thing and I believed that for, for years. Until I, I studied and started reading the doctrines, and I realized, oh man, that just blew my theory right there. But but this this really makes sense because now if you go into, um, I believe it's in Peter and in the book of Jude, it actually makes reference to this, hmm. and where where one of the things people believe when Jesus ascended into the, you know, in the three days when he was dead, he went to go take the keys of death, hell, and the grave. But he also went to go tell those those rebellious angels who did that thing in Genesis six with the woman yeah. that hey, your plan didn't work. Here I am, because one of the things they tried to do was to mess up the bloodline, the bloodline and the lineage of the Messiah, because of the seed of the woman in the garden that will bruise your head. That's what Jesus, or that's what the the Lord basically told Satan. You know, the yeah. seed of the woman will bruise your head. So there was that line from Adam and then through David. You know, basically they were trying to stop the Messiah from coming. They were trying to that's stop right. that. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. So that's why when you you almost have to look at this story that we're talking about, as crazy as it sounds, through the you got to keep that in mind when you start studying the book of Revelation. And then you realize, mm. wait a minute, this is what Jesus that we see there in Revelation 1, eyes of flame of fire and all this, he's coming in and he's going to judge and deal wow. with these things. Yeah. Wow. You know? So, yeah, he is dealing with man, but then he's dealing with these rebellion, re rebellious, uh, whatever you want to call them, you know, ain't fallen angels, demonic spirits, the principalities, yeah. powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. And then think of the Tower of Babel. I mean, what word gets referenced big time in the book of Revelation? Babylon. Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And you, and you just you just look at that tower. What they wanted, they they wanted to ascend into the heavens, and they wanted to be, you know, all this unity and oneness, and and that's the that's what you see the Antichrist and all that all about in yeah. uh, in, in that that time period. You know. You know, I almost wonder because I'm I'm still not fully in. You know, I don't, I wouldn't. You know, as far as pre-edemic or the flood, I don't know. I haven't studied it enough to kind of choose where I'm at on that. But, uh, you know, I wonder if it is a mixture of both, because with the demonic world, you have different, obviously different ranks, different levels uh, of devils. If you go read Ephesians, there are principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. But, but you see, um, that that whole thing— look. Zach, you ventured into a. <laughs> I know we probably hit the brakes <laughs> here, but you, you, know. <laughs> you mentioned into the. But there is a reason for all of that that comes from these 
these events that we're talking about here, mm. the, the the Tower of Babel and everything that okay. went down. Okay, I get, I I already yeah, I I'm yeah. putting the pieces together there. So you don't have there to is. have that pre-Adamic, uh, you know, race to oh. see that you know there would be different levels of demons, you know. Yeah, 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 and so, and and I mean, then there's the argument that people say, well, you know, we as a church, we must we must d declare war and fight with the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Where I, I believe, no way. We our our place that we deal with is like if a person is bound, oppressed, lost, sick, we deal with the devil right there. Yes. Jesus is the one that deals with the principalities and powers. He's the one that comes and takes the enemies of God and puts it on. Because that's the whole thing. That's, that's yeah. what you I see in the book of Revelation. He comes and he deals with all of that. He's dealing with this whole thing, the principalities, the powers, the rebellion, the whole thing. He puts them under his feet. Yeah. We, as, 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 as believers, we are called to have dominion over the enemy, over our flesh, over those things in our life and in our in our circumstances in our life, but also to preach the gospel, because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and to break sickness, bondage, wherever, however the devil is working in an individual's life. Mm. But, but but as we preach the gospel and as we uh, um, do this on the earth it, by the Holy Spirit. And really, the dominion of Jesus as King, He deals with those things, the prince, the, the in heavenly places, and and all those kinds of things. But I don't think we do. Now, there's a lot of people that probably be mad at me by saying that, but there's. I I'm agree. Not the only, I'm not the only one that believes that, yeah. and I think a lot of Christians, they try to do something that that the Bible does not um, does not actually tell us to venture into that area. Yeah, and and doing things that you don't even see the apostles doing, no. you know, it's just kind of they take a couple scriptures and make a something, you know, like you're saying, you know, dealing with devils in the or demonic powers in the heavenlies. We have no business trying to enter into that realm or doing warfare in that realm. You know, there there is a there's a scope to the authority that we have, and it's. It's what you were saying, people who are bound on the earth or taking authority over our flesh. That's right. And But coming back, the reason why we're bringing all this up is because that is exactly what Jesus is doing here yeah. in the book of Revelation. Mm. He comes in and he basically he, he deals with all of that stuff, man. And, he, and that is what that crown of dominion and of victory he takes and he gives it to the Father. You know, and, and I mean, there's even a scripture that says that. We deal with the things he's told us to deal with, the dominion and things that we need to do. But he does that, and he, he takes that victory, and all of it, he hands it to the Father. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that that scripture. Are you talking about um, how he delivers the, 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 the church to the Father? I forgot what the exact yeah. scripture is, but yeah. that's at the end, the end, when it's all no, wrapped end. up, where he the takes end, the end. church, essentially, or the kingdoms, or the church. I oh, I, I used to have that passage memorized. That's my favorite part. Me where it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about, because he delivers, right. he surrenders us, basically, to the Father, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till we get there. But 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 you see, Zach, you, getting into the book of Revelation, you almost, you it's essential that you have to see the big picture. Yeah. Because if you if you just look at the the like a narrow the, viewpoint, you'll get you're gonna you're gonna go, what the heck is this <laughs> talking about? But if, if you if you go you're gonna be like an eagle soaring soaring high up looking down at this thing to 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 really get it. And that's that's actually why we're approaching the I feel it's a good way to approach the book of Revelation from the aerial view. <laughs> yeah. Because the moment you get down into the into the alleyways and that, you go like, "What the heck?" You, you know, you can get lost in it. Yeah, and and you know, I know we'll probably wrap up here in a second. So if anyone in the chat, you have a couple questions, we'll we'll take those before we jump off. But 
Uh, you know, I would say to the people that have been watching these streams, if you've never studied through the book of Revelation, I, I really feel like this is a good place to start. And even if there's a couple places along the way you might get confused or not fully understand, I know my first time through the book of Revelation, I didn't know what I just read. <laughs> and then the second time I read through it and studied it, it was clear. The third time, it was like, wow. I felt like I was driving. I felt like the first time I, I had a machete going through weeds. The second time, it felt like a dirt road. And then the third time was kind of like a highway, you know? And now it's, it's, it's just, it's opened up. And it's so, like those. It's like those pictures they used in the 90s, I think it was, that they'd make you look at because something would come out at you. <laughs> yeah. And I would yeah. stand there for ever looking at this thing. So I just can't see it. I just can't see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful. Once you, once you have an understanding of what the book of Revelation is about, what's being dealt with, that Jesus is coming soon, his reward's coming with him, he's coming as the judge, it's it's amazing. It, it really, yeah. it'll take your your walk with God, your relationship with the Lord to the whole whole new realm. You know, it, it really enriches uh, your relationship with God. So, yeah. oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, 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 go no, ahead. no, no. I was going to switch gears to questions. So, Oh, no, I was just going to say, just remember, uh, he's coming back. There's the catching away the church, the resurrection of the dead. There's the um, the seven year tribulation, the second coming, thousand year millennial reign, judgment, new heavens, new earth. If you understand nothing else, just grab that. Just that, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> just the meat and yeah. the potatoes. Just grab. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, but actually. We do have a couple questions, but okay. uh, I, I was wondering how to have a segue into the. You have a series, a teaching out about deliverance, and man, oh, I yeah. I know that could really bless some people because that is such a a topic mm. right now in the body of Christ that people want to know, you know. And and unfortunately, there's a lot of bad information out there. You go on YouTube or scrolling through Facebook or whatever, but um, you know, I I really I'm. I haven't watched yours yet, but I trust your teaching. I've heard you teach on deliverance before, and it's always really well, good. So how no. could how could someone get a hold of that? Well, they just need to go to my website, vincentskinner.org or worldrevivalministries.com and go to the store. And then in this, when you go to the store, it's going to take you to like a separate website. But there you can find the courses and all that, and you just click on that and you'll see it there. And um, yeah, I I did that course because of all the weird teaching and craziness out there. And and basically, I think Jesus gives the best teaching on deliverance that there is. You know, it, it, that's what we don't realize. There's actually a teaching that Jesus gives on it. Mm. So we don't even have to go to all this weird stuff. We just have to look to what how Jesus laid it out, and and that's part of the course that I, I give there and then about living free and keys to to um, freedom and deliverance. So I and, just I just found it. It's called the pathway to freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, it, it has all the teachings li listed out. It says Jesus's teachings on deliverance, Jesus and the Jewish exorcist, the finger of God, and the strong men um, staying free. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> learn it. <laughs> Uh, and then pathway to freedom, uh, and the enemy strategies, keys to freedom, and then and then a whole thing on freedom about giving no place to the enemy, uh, freedom yeah. from fear. All this stuff is so good. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. And if there is someone out there you're looking for good teaching on deliverance, I, I'd encourage you to go just check it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Deliverance yeah. doesn't have to be strange and weird. No. Jesus, Jesus is our deliverer. I agree. That could yeah. be a whole nother video one day. We could do a stream yes. on that. We should actually. We should actually do a stream on, on, on deliverance. It's a very interesting subject. And to get yeah. into all, especially, you know, that, that one section that you read there about the Jewish exorcists, they were roaming, they roamed the countryside and the kinds of things they did. It's so familiar and similar to some of the craziness that is out there you know i, I shouldn't get so it so weren't the seven sons of skiva jewish exorcists they could be yeah they, they, yeah yeah, yeah possibly so, yeah. 
but yeah, they yeah. were doing things to try to expel devils. But unfortunately, some of that tradition has been passed down even to today. Is that right? Oh, yeah. A lot of the inner healing, deliverance um, uh, stuff that's out there is what I call like a hybrid of theology, where some of it's biblical, some yeah. of it's psychology and whatever. Like I, I was looking at this one thing because I wanted to see what they believed. And there's this one thought where they take the people literally, <laughs> it's crazy, but they take the people literally in the session that they take them in to the point where they still a sperm in their father. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> then they ask them, how do you feel? What, what do, you, do you feel accepted? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was not stupid. expecting that. <laughs> but, and then they go to, okay, you feel, are you good now? And then they speak over the sperm <laughs> and how you feel, because maybe the father didn't want you or whatever. <laughs> and then they go to a month what that brother how you feel that now that you conceived in the womb you know <laughs> you're through, kidding go through every month of the thing until the baby's born it, it, it doesn't surprise me it <laughs> mom, yeah. mom just put in the chat oh my <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i mean we should do we should actually do a session on that it would be it would be very interesting <laughs> i mean i mean you know i don't know uh, yeah, that's that's why I did the course because I thought if if I I need to at least try out of my my own self bring a, bring some kind of sanity uh, to it, you know. Well, and you said it. Jesus has the best course on deliverance, and and it looks like just seeing through the notes here that's it's all based on what Jesus taught, and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can't go extra biblical on this no. stuff, you know. I mean, that's the problem. It's it's a lot of. That's why I call it. I call it like a hybrid, like a quasi hybrid form of teaching. It's a mixture, yep. and 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 you know. Uh, but anyway, yeah. And uh, it's it's uh, the enemy too, just muddying the waters. If he can't get you to stop casting devils out he'll just skew it so much that you're not even really doing anything and uh yeah. you know as a pastor over the years i've seen people who are perfectly fine free they go to a certain place who someone's practicing deliverance outside the scope of the word and i've seen people get into bondage i've seen people who never dealt with fear start to deal with fear or never yeah. dealt with lust start to deal with lust and no, uh, no. It, all because, because they you know yeah i mean wrong think practices. about it think about it zach if you if you are practicing so-called spiritual things on oh, i won't do that spiritual things on people yeah. that's not of god oh. or not biblical but yet you're getting some kind of an effect yeah they would say victory but if it's not biblical and it's not of God, then what the heck are you opening the person to? Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and it's yeah, and, it's serious. And that's now there is there is psychology and all that, you know, like some that really does help people. You know, I'm not, I'm not. Some of it's really weird and crazy, but there there is. I mean, you know, there is stuff that really does help people. I mean, I would rather have somebody that's unsaved, that doesn't know Jesus, that's not going to at least get some kind of help. I want yeah. them to come to Jesus, and I want them to get saved, healed, delivered, and set free, and 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 see the freedom that the Holy Spirit can bring. But but some of this stuff is even beyond any logic or any kind of proper training. <clears throat> And yet yeah. they've written yeah. books on it, and they do conferences, and they do, and and it's it's, and I agree with you. It keeps them in a perpetual cycle of believing they're free, only to find out they're not. And and yeah. It, anyway. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've been around people who've paid 
uh, 500 bucks a session to get delivered, and then they would have to come back for their yearly deliverance for $500. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, some, I'm sure you have too. Um, yeah. But just awful abuses, and you know, for me, when when I see, yeah, I, it, you know, I, I, I think it, I think it's weird, especially what we're seeing a lot of right now is people posting you know, manifestations of the demonic online on their social media gets a lot of views, gets a lot of clicks and a lot of likes. And I've, yeah. I've been around some stuff. It's like, why do you have all these demonic manifestations, but there's never any manifestation whatsoever of the presence of God or the Holy Ghost or the anointing? The whole emphasis is around demonic manifestation. That right there to me is a big red flag. The power yeah. of God is so much greater than the power of the devil, and I'm not impressed by anything the devil does. I'm not even impressed by it. But you have yeah. others who are like, they they have an unhealthy obsession with the demonic. Yeah, and and you know, and you know, I've got friends, and uh, quite a few, that that's what they do. They have a ministry of deliverance, and and all that, but. They do it from a biblical point of view. They do yes. it uh, biblically correct, and yeah, the devil manifests. Yeah, because I mean, and they do, he does. But sure. I tell you what, it's it's not this weird deliverance slash going back to the <laughs> <laughs> you know whatever they do. I don't know. I don't understand. I call it onion peeling. Okay, onion peeling stuff. They, yeah. they they do it from a biblical standpoint and people are getting set free. So they, so having said all this, we're not trying to throw out the deliverance no, ministry. It's no, part no, of the no. gospel. Yes. But some of the stuff is just outright crazy. You yes. know, that, that that people are doing, yeah. I agree. So yeah, no. questions no. here is uh okay. someone now asked, that we've stirred all that up. <laughs> I think that'd be a really good stream. I I, I <laughs> We should do one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, why would God create a being that would rebel? So why would He create Lucifer, knowing that He'd rebel? I, I guess that would go into the thing of free will and the freedom of choice, and yeah, God yeah. turning things around for His glory and um, yeah. the plan of redemption and just yeah. what He allows, you know? Yeah, He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, because yeah, if we don't have that free will to choose, then. Um, well, it'd go back to God doesn't want robots. He wants people who can choose him. Yeah, because worship, I mean, what is worship? Is it something that is programmed to worship? Or is it something that freely out of their own will yeah. brings that worship and that love? You know? Yeah, because even, yeah. even Adam and Eve, they, had, they still had a choice, and they chose. You know, And, yeah. if, and if they wouldn't have made that choice— well, one of us would have, <laughs> you know, later down yeah. the road. And I mean, look, look later on, Enoch. Yeah. He he chose to serve God to the extent that God took him. Yeah. Look, look at um, um, Noah. Out of all the people on the earth in that day, God saved him and his and his family because it says they were righteous. They were they were right before God. You know, yeah. so I mean, you see all these people. So it the the, the ability and the choice is there, mm. going down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Someone says, "What makes a person or church apostate?" <laughs> well, if they've turned from the faith. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think if you, you know, in 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 in, in theology, there's certain things that we just it's non-negotiable yeah then, yeah then there's certain things yeah you can negotiate it it doesn't really change anything if you believe one way or another you know but i think it's the non-negotiables the doctrinal things that if if they've gone into that and messed with that and changed that what that produces like, for example, just some of the crazy theology that we talked about last time, I would say this would lean into it. Somebody that is into, for example, universalism, where God, this God of love is so amazing, you'll send nobody and nothing to hell. In fact, there isn't a hell, because how can a God of love yeah. do a hell? So, And even in the end, even the devil will be saved. You know, that's, that's universalism. So that 
if there's a church that is into that, that you know, you you would then say apostle. That's just one example. Then I mean, I saw a, I saw this thing online about, about this church out in I believe in California that they it's a church where they believe that Jesus was an alien. And, and we were spawned by aliens. You know, that's called the, the, the alien theory. That's an apostate. Yeah. You know, I think ec- any church that is, or any uh, kind of thing that is built on extra biblical revelation has the, has the danger of going there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I call it the absolutes. There are absolutes and there are non-absolutes, you know. Yes. So. Yeah, the absolutes yeah. are like the virgin birth that Jesus died on a cross. That's exactly um, right. Yeah. You know, the Bible is the word of God. Uh, those Jesus. are the absolutes. We're not going to negotiate, you know, and, and about every denomination is going to unify there, you know, on the things That's that right. matter. Yeah, you know? exactly right. So at the moment you they they go off of that, they're yeah. in danger of being there. Sure. Yeah. Now, there are some people that are kind of extreme in their positions where they'll take a non-absolute and they'll formulate an opinion, and if you don't agree with their opinion, they call you an apostate, but you're really not because, you know, they— Well, that's they, just their opinion. Yeah, that's just—yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I no, had a guy just, in my face at the river one time because uh, he called me an apostate because I wouldn't let him—he's not even a member of the church. It was the first day I ever met him, and he was standing in front of the church door not letting our members in without them— hearing his whole spiel about a candidate he wanted to get elected and he wanted their signature. Uh, so I uh, was trying to move him from the door and he got I in my face. I was there when that happened, eh? No, I no. That. No, it, it would have been something else. It was Jason Williams was there. I, I probably told you about him last time you were here. But okay. evangelist Jason Williams. Cause, oh, okay, uh, that's a why, because I'm thinking why I do I know that story. Yeah, I think it yeah. had just happened and then you came and I'm sure we told you all about it because it was a big thing. But he, okay, the whole thing so. is, he was in my face. Uh, I was, he, 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 well, I earned a title, Mr. Apostate. So oh, I don't Mr. know, Apostate. Mr. So. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, eh? <laughs> because I didn't let him stand in front of the church and, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, so whatever. But, you know, those are just crazy people. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> but then there are the absolutes that we just don't, we're not going to negotiate on. You know, and I think that does divide us. Yeah, I think it should, and it does, and it must, because um, yeah, I agree. If, some, if somebody says that Jesus is not the Son of God, he's not the Lamb of God, he did not come in the flesh, then I'm going to say, well, you know, sorry, I cannot walk with you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not in agreement. I cannot be in agreement, and there is no, there is no halfway point of, of agreement. Here. I, 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 just the other day. On Instagram, I, a clip came up, and uh, it was just a clip of some random church, some random minister, and he was preaching. And what he said blew my mind. He said uh, that uh, it doesn't matter what kind of death Jesus died, even if he would have been by a firing squad. It's just the fact of who he was, not how he died. And that's that's against Scripture. He had to die on a cross. It had to be a wooden cross. Well, you know. Well, what about the, What about this one? A preacher said once that he came to the revelation that, wait a minute, Jesus is the Son of God. I'm a Son of God. So I could have been the one that died on the oh, cross. No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it's the doctrine of devils right there. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I... This happened years ago in the mid '90s. Okay, I won't say where it was, but it was in the U.S. I was just starting out and all that, you know. And I went and I went to these meetings where I was going to preach at this like place, and there's all a bunch of teachers and everything, and I was one of them. But I didn't really know the people, so I went there. And so during the worship, every it was the songs we sang, everything. But when it came to worshiping, it got weird because they started to turn to each other and they started to worship Jesus or Christ in, in the other place. What? This was in America. In America. And they started to worship like I worship you. 
almighty God, you know, Jesus, I love you. But it was all, and then they got, and we were like, did we just see what we saw now? And they came to us and tried to do it. And we went, no, 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 no. You don't worship Jesus in me. I'm not Jesus. You worship Jesus in heaven. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Just stop right there. And they, and they basically, they got offended by it. They, they wow. said, well, you know, Jesus, the Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. Great is he that is in you. So uh, don't go into heaven to bring Christ down or into the earth to bring Christ up. He's in your heart. Oh, and in your so let's worship Jesus in you. And we said, Lisa and I said, well, you know what? We have to cut ties with these people. Yeah. So we left in such a way that it offended them completely because we had to them to know, everybody to know, we have we are not part of this and we want nothing to do with it. Sure. Wow. Because, but it, but you can see how the thinking and the theology can easily go there. Yeah. You're not careful. Yeah. So talk about apostasy. All right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Man. Yeah, there was a guy uh, that he got saved in prison, and uh, he, he said he saw a vision. Jesus came in, and he received Jesus in prison, and then that night he saw a vision that Jesus came in, and Jesus actually went inside of him. And so it's like, yeah, it's great. Testimony, you got born again. Jesus lives in you. Uh, about five, six years later, he formulated an idea in his mind that that meant he is the second coming of Jesus. And now uh -huh. Jesus is living in him as, and he began to say he's Jesus Christ. And he went that extreme. And so, man, what, I wonder what that is that gets in people's head. I mean, obviously a demon spirit that deceives people. I mean, I guess if you think about it, there's Adam in the garden with God and he gets, you know, he falls into sin. Eve gets deceived, but deception, man. And but that's why, that's why Zach being part of a good church. Yes. Good teaching is covering a pastor, a pastor that teaches good stuff, being around Christians that are Bible based and good doctrine is essential. It can cost you your life if you if you're I not because you can get off into especially today with with the church of YouTube. I mean, you can you can jump on there and get any kind of a teaching or doctrine that you can imagine. Yeah you know that that people are preaching and they preach it in, and they teach it in such a way that like they authoritative they know it they convinced and so all you need is somebody that's kind of questioning or hears something they like it pulls them in and there you go yeah yeah i agree yeah well vincent had a good night Hey, we got into some, we, we ventured off into the swamp a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, right. it's good. We came through the other side. Amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> well, hey, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. We had a lot of fun. Uh, what are, you, are we going to be doing this next Friday or? Um, or are we, we'll, I'll, we'll, I'll talk to you. We'll I'll, talk I'll let after. you know because we have to look at the, the yeah. calendar because I'll, I'll be preaching next Friday night. Yeah, for sure. Okay, everyone, we but love maybe, you. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, we'll let everybody know. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time.